if we have a healthy tree, a healthy shrub, we're not going to have the same issues with insects because they're healthy. What is going on, my friend? It's Austin here from Elevate Applicate, bringing you yet another video on pesticide applicator content. Today, what we're gonna talk about is drought and how drought affects pesticides, how they function, how it works with plants, insects, fungal diseases, etc. okay? And the reason why I'm bringing up this topic is because here in Michigan, we've gone uh, roughly 19 days without rain in my particular region. It actually, it just rained today for the first time in, like I said, about 19 days. Uh, on the west side of the state, my mom lives up there. She lives on a lake and her lake is probably down six feet vertically. So just a, a grasp of that, that's like 140, 160 acre lake. And for a 160 acre lake to drop down six feet, that is a substantial amount of water that's being displaced, not being replenished. It's going to affect our trees, our grass, our shrubs, the forest, I mean, everything and anything, right? So how does drought affect us as pesticide applicators? Well, for one, we're going to see an increase, try and draw an arrow here, in insect activity. And the reason for that, generally speaking, is because once we have a drought, um, it's usually dry, it's usually warm, and warmth creates the breeding grounds for insects to breed multiple generations if they are an insect for multiple generations. On top of that, what it's gonna cause is basically stress on the trees and the shrubs, the grass, and when that has stress, insects move in, they're opportunistic, right? If we have a healthy tree, a healthy shrub, we're not going to have the same issues with insects because they're healthy, just in general. Also because of drought, we're gonna have a decrease in fungal. The reason for that is most fungal diseases are based off of high humidity, lots of moisture, lots of water. In the drought years, we see an increase in insect activity and a decrease in fungal issues, which is really nice. Think of like apple scab, right? If we had a drought during the time of apple scab, and if you think of the disease triangle, you have a tree that's susceptible to the disease, but you don't have the conditions that are right for the disease, and so they tend to not get apple scab as bad or at all. Uh, this year we had prime conditions for apple scab in the beginning of the year, and then it slowly decreased as it's been super dry. So that's kind of what we see in our plant healthcare sector. Now what do we see as far as herbicides, right? How do herbicides function? So herbicides work kind of interestingly with droughts, and it depends on where you are in the drought. If you're at the beginning of the drought, herbicides are gonna function pretty much the same. Um, they're still gonna go through the processes, the, tr the whatever you're applying it to is still gonna go through its natural states when the herbicide triggers those hormonal responses inside of it. But when you get to the point that the plant has to decide what it's going to do, is it going to conserve water? Is it going to stop growing? Is it going to shut down certain systems? That's when herbicides function differently or not at all. And so basically, if you are deep enough into a drought and you go to apply an herbicide to a plant that's definitely being affected by a drought, what's going to happen is that plant is going to start shutting systems down with, within itself, and that's to basically keep itself alive, right? It doesn't want to reach that permanent wilting point. If you don't know what that is, that's basically the point where the plant completely dies because there's zero water right? Permanent wilting point is plant death. So the plants are going to do everything that they can to not die. And when you get to the point where you're in the drought, I deal with a lot of poison ivy and I've dealt with poison ivy in droughts with tons of rain. And I can tell you that if I apply an herbicide to poison ivy in a drought, it is not going to be as effective. It's going to take longer for the plant to display symptoms. And it, it just, it might not even show any symptoms whatsoever because the plant has completely shut down it's wanting to grow, basically it's auxins, right? It's trying to divert energy into its root system to locate water. That's what they're really trying to do. So they're not doing this outward growth, which most herbicides are going to attack a plant by triggering its outward growth to be excessive to the point where it starves itself and it dies. So these are kind of like the three main things that we see in a drought. 